Hello stars, welcome to Astrology Moon. I'm Kaimi here to help you out with the moon in the first house. The moon is going to be everything that is in your mind. Everything that is your feeling, your emotions, anything that is your maternal side, and everything which is your past. Now the moon being in the first house, the first house is your ego, your identity, your goals, your determination. Everything that is your beginning, the impressions, things that everyone can see, like your physical appearance. So of course the moon is in a Mercury ruled thing, which is per Hellenistic astrology. And this is where Mercury found planetary joy. Mercury is a youthful sign. So therefore the moon being inside the first house shows that you have a youthful appearance. No matter what your age is, you tend to look younger by maybe 5 to 10 years of your real actual age. This is a good thing because the moon represents the past, so it's youthful. And we see these changes of the moon always being in a cyclical stage of going from new moon to full moon, new moon to full moon. So we see this kind of a relationship of the mother showing a lot of herself, these emotions. You know, the emotions of a waxing state, showing that there's so much emotion coming forward. And then we see the full moon. The full moon is this big expression of emotions. And we say these natives are very reactive. You know, having the moon in the first house shows that you show who you are very quite easily with your expressions, your reactions. So people say it's easy to read you because you put your heart on your sleeves. Well, this comes from the whole mother of being just emotional state. The emotional could be happiness, it could be being scared, it could be just being sad or angry, whatever it is, there is this up and down. No matter that the moon is going in this cyclical state of being balanced, you know, I go from new moon to full moon to new moon again. Everything is balanced, but the sign where the moon is will dictate what kind of up and down you will show, how different you will be. So anyway, we are looking at the seventh house, which is directly opposite of the first house. This is going to be 180 degrees. It'll show about your love life, everything that comes in the future. Now, because you are the moon, you tend to care for people. You tend to care for yourself. You are very empathetic or intuitive. Sympathetic sometimes when you notice people are having a hard time in life. You are there to support people. You take care for other people. That is the moon. The moon is maternal, representing the breasts and the stomach. The breast is to help the whole idea of a need to nurture and make sure people are healthy or are taking care so they will not feel, you know, down or not feel they are not starving. They just need that comfort. You could give it to them. But the seventh house will be the opposite. That means your love life in the future will be someone who is going to take care of you. So you take care of people throughout your life. You are that person who understands other people. And therefore the seventh house is going to show the opposite side of them. And show that I will take care of you. This relationship will be good. But you know in the beginning the first house. It shows that you are connected to the fourth house, which is your roots, your ancestors, your mother, caretaking, comfort, environment, foundation, everything that is tidiness or clean or everything that is pets. Now the fourth house is very important because it's going to uh, have an aspect of 90 degrees, which is a square. And this is the mother. So your mother Definitely as you grow up, as you are being raised, it shows that there is either this very strong sense of motherhood, which could actually be negative towards you, or positive. The thing is that it's very strong. The square is a challenge. And when we see challenges in life, it teaches us that this is how we must grow either in a way we feel, okay, I will deal with it this way. Or I will go against it and try to feel better about what I do not like and try to change that. So either you go with the flow or you change how it is approached. The, the way your mother is raising you, the way your mother treats you, the way your mother has her own ambitions or doing everything her own way, maybe not paying attention to you as you are growing up. So this is making you feel like, I want to be seen. I want my mother to give me recognition. 
or if your mother gives you a lot of recognition this is like okay my mother is smothering me i do not want to be like this i i want to raise a child who will not be smothered you know whatever the situation is it teaches you that you will apply this from the fourth house so when you have your seventh house the relationships agreements the equilibrium the marriage your love is teaching you how to be either what you did not like about being raised by your mother or what you did like being raised by your mother this is going to influence how you put your soul into that relationship now when, while you are growing up everything that is very close to you shows exactly okay the third house and the fifth house so the third house is going to be 60 degrees which is sextile and the fifth house is going to be 120 degrees which is a trine these are very good because the third house is teaching you your education it's teaching you your communication your peers everything about your friends you're learning everything ephemeral short-term traveling so of course as you connect with this house you're gaining that uh, energy that teaches you you learn about yourself you learn that a lot of people understand you very easily you learn that a lot of people see you know who you are they can understand you very easily and then this teaches you how you want to grow up in what kind of field or in what kind of way do you feel friends are your friends or how your lover should be you just all learn from this as you grow up because people can see exactly what you put for them you're very reactive and it shows that when you grow up probably you're most likely to fall into a career which is going to be about taking care of other people help other people you might be a comedian you might be an actor you might be a singer anything that shows that you're connecting with an audience to help them maybe because you feel that this is a great way to show people you know I can understand your problem so therefore I show it in this film or I sing it in this song and you relate to me you feel that I take care of you you could actually take care of people physically. You could be a therapist, a physical therapist, or you could be a psychologist. You could be anyone who does counseling. You could be a doctor, a nurse, someone who shows that I take care of you. You could be a social worker. I take care of you, but maybe not physically. I just do everything based on what I evaluate. You have that sense, that intuition that comes with the moon. The moon learns of this process of growing up. Oh, I understand how people work through my peers. The third house is a young house of 14 to 21 years old. So you learn to connect with people either who are just like you or who need you. You are the mother. So if you feel people do not need you, this teaches you. Okay, how can I be more useful? What useful, not useful. <laughs> so how can I help other people? Because they do not need me. So this drives you crazy just like your interaction with your mother or your life with your mother being raised. You know, I want that attention. I want to be seen. I want to know that I'm useful in this world. So you tell yourself, what can I do? How can I improve myself? And then this is going to help you with your friends, how you connect with other people. People might see your worth in this case. Other people might like you because you are so honest. You never want to hold anything unless you are probably a moon in Scorpio, a moon in Capricorn, a moon in uh, Aquarius. These signs are a little bit more quiet. They do not want to share as much. But a moon in Pisces, a moon in Aries, you know, these people are a lot more outspoken. Even a moon in Gemini can be very outspoken and say a lot of secrets. You might be into that gossip because you feel maybe that is how people want to be taken care. They want to feel that, you know, you give information, you gossip. They like that. But anyway, you find how to mold yourself throughout this life based on how other people interact with you. The moon is about goals and determination. So it tells itself, I see myself in this direction taking care of these type of people. And therefore, that's your goal. People understand your direction. It is not like you try to hide anything unless I said you are one of those signs. So most likely people follow you. They can understand, oh, I like you because of blah, blah, blah. 
And in the fifth house, that is going to be everything about your children, fertility. It shows that you are going to be someone who is interested in your leisure activities, take gambling, oh sorry, get into gambling, taking risk, and everything that is your strength and courage. Now, the fifth house is the complementary house, the house of the sun. This shows a beautiful relationship between the moon and the sun. So this is where you pick up a lot of that good energy from someone who is more down to earth, someone who is more practical, someone who is more different than you. Based on emotions, this is someone who is different. So you see that this person is very lively, very energetic. You see that these uh, people get into these uh, leisure activities. The moon in the first house really likes outdoor activities, really likes to go in certain directions about, you know, staying fit, staying healthy. The first house is about being active. Whether it's mentally or physically, the, the moon really wants to travel. So the fifth house maybe will spark you to do hiking, uh, canoeing, anything like going traveling, you know, just to other countries or whatever. You might be explorative, like in, I'm interested in viewing volcanoes. I want to take pictures of birds who are only in this forest. So all of this will come to you with the fifth house. The sun shines upon the moon, showing that this is life. This is something beautiful. I want you to see this because the sun represents life. It represents ego. It represents strength. It represents blood, everything that pumps to your vein. And the moon is the mind. So the mind is the strongest thing. The mind says, I feel interested in doing this, and the moon will follow that. There are pursuits which you will take. The fifth house will show you that interest, and that's most likely how you'll meet your significant other, is through the interest that you have been doing. So let's say that you are interested in cooking classes. So you go out to have cooking classes, that's probably where you'll meet your mate showing very interested in the person who is probably different from you but compliments you in the same space. So that's all that I can think of right now for the moon in the first house. If there's anything I have not said, write in the comments below. If you like this video, give me a like, share this video with your friends, and subscribe if you have not already. I hope to see you in another video, stars. Until then, goodbye.